The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and considered in her mind what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I do not know man? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your kinswoman Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren, for with God nothing will be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We've had a variety of annunciations read in the liturgies of these last days. The annunciation to Joseph, to Zechariah, and even remembrances of the visitation of Gabriel in the Old Testament, like to the mother of Solomon. And today, the great annunciation of or the greatest of them all, Mary, who was betrothed to Joseph, and that, may, that meant that she was engaged, as it were. We would use the word engaged to Joseph, and that state usually lasted a year. Uh, and during that time, the woman would remain with her own family, and so would the groom remain with his own family. But after a year, they would come together and then the marriage would be sealed. So Mary was still a virgin. I do not know man. St. Bernard gives us a beautiful meditation on Mary during the Annunciation, during this dialogue with the angel. And he imagines the whole world waiting for her answer. And he, as it were, pleads with Mary 
to say yes. And at the end of the meditation, we see that Mary gives her word, let what you have said be done. She gives her consent, and then she receives the word. The incarnation occurs as soon as Mary gives her consent. She becomes pregnant with the word. The word is made flesh in her womb. So we are very familiar with this text and we're very familiar with the language of this mystery, but the mystery itself surpasses all understanding because we are dealing with God and God's plan and Mary's place in it. But what she did is actually a model and an example for us. The message comes to her. The call comes to us. We give our word, our vows, and God gives us his Son. The Son who dwells within us. We will come to them and we will dwell with them. God's plan for each of us. And so the, the message for today, as we get so close to Christmas, is to stay close to Mary, to stay close to her and learn from her how to say yes to God, not just in the monumental decisions of our lives, but in the practical daily decisions which weave a life of decision, a life of commitment. And the more we say yes, the more we receive. And our word and the word of God become united even in us. And so we pray to Mary today to help us live with this mystery today because we will live with it every day if we say yes to God. Amen.